Hello friends, uh, welcome back. So in the previous video, uh, I just uh, introduced to you about the basics of structural analysis, which are actually very, very basic things. Uh, for many uh, other basic things, you can refer any of the standard textbooks. I usually refer uh, st structural analysis by R.C. Hibbler. Most of the things what I am doing on these, all these PPTs and uh, numerical examples, all will be from R.C. Hibbler. So now next let us start with actual module that is uh, arches and cables. So the subject code what we have in uh, video is 18 CV 42. I will just uh, uh, in this slide I will just tell you what are the things what will be, which will be going to learn in this arches and cables. So we'll be uh, totally concentrating on only the determinate structures. So we'll be concentrating only on the determinate arches. So that's why that name three hinged parabolic and circular arches which supports at same and different levels. We'll see all those things. Next, determination of normal thrust, radial shear and bending moment in case of arches. Then we have analysis of cables under point loads and informally distributed loads. Length of cables for supports at the same and different levels. Stiffening trusses for suspension cables. So basically, uh, how I can uh, distribute these things are like this are uh, with the arches this portion will be with the arches and uh, this portion which will be with the cables so first we'll start with the arches then we'll come to the cables now what could be the outcome of this uh, module determine the stress resultants in arches and cables so this will be the course outcome what we'll be having in case of this module so let's uh, let's uh, quickly jump into the topic. So this is an arch structure. What you can see here, this is from the Arches National Park in uh, Jurassic United States. It is a natural formed uh, arch structure which has been formed because of the weathering of the rock or it is because of nature, right? So uh, even I can say that nature has a uh, arch structures. Now, uh, apart from that, we have some man-made arches also, like world famous arch structures. This is the gate to the west in the US and this is the Brookfield place in Canada. So these are the man-made modern arch structures. Now let's see uh, the man-made uh, very olden uh, arch structures like we have this in uh, Paris, France on the left side, what you can see, which was built in the year 1836. And on the right side, you can see uh, the structure which is uh, the arch structure which is situated in India which is also world famous which is the uh, India Gate New Delhi. Apart from this also we have many arch structures but I can say these are most prominent arch structures what we have. Okay now introduction to arches. Arches can be used to reduce the bending moments uh, in a long span structures. Essentially an arch act as an inverted cable so it receives uh, its load mainly in the compression although because of its rigidity, it must, it must also resist some bending and shear depending on uh, how it is loaded and shaped. So we'll see uh, the meaning of all these things in the next slides. Okay, uh, in case of beams supporting informally distributed loads, the maximum bending moment increases with the square of the span. Okay, now what is the meaning of that? So suppose, uh, okay, let me not explain this here. Let me explain this in the next slide. It will be much more clear to you. So we we know uh, what is the maximum bending moment in case of a simply supported beam carrying a informally distributed load that is double L square by eight. That's why this sentence has been said. Like in case of beams supporting informally distributed loads, the maximum bending moment increases with the square of the span that is W L square and hence they become uneconomical for long span structures. In such situations, uh, we could uh, uh, use the arches which are advantageously employed as they would do develop the horizontal reactions which in turn reduce the design bending moments. Right? Uh, the meaning of this sentence we'll see in the next slide. Okay, now uh, how I can compare a beam and an arch. Now you can see here, uh, this is a parabolic arch which is uh, pinned at these two ends. We have one point load which is at a quarter span okay, from the left support. So since uh, these two are the pinned supports, we have two uh, 
reactions which will be developing one vertical and one horizontal here similarly here also one vertical and one horizontal right so these reactions you can find very easily by using basic statics and let this be the ordinate uh, i will call that as y uh, let the span of this arch be l okay now if i use a simply supported beam of the sp same span l okay so how i can draw that so let us uh, say that this is a simply supported beam okay both ends pin and of the same span l as that of this arch okay and also have that point same point load p at a distance of uh, l by 4 from the left support now uh, how i can find the bending moment at this uh, point that is under the point load so you can find that very easily so that bending moment comes out to be 3 pl by 16 you can find that using basics so this is the bending moment in case of this beam that is the maximum bending moment under the point load now in case of arches the bending moment at that point will be so it will be 3 p L over 16 minus the horizontal H this H multiplied by Y so I will call this as M prime that is maximum bending moment the another value now you can see here easily if you compare M and M prime of course M prime is less than M that is the bending moment developed in case of arch because of the same same load because of the same span is actually less than the bending moment developed in the beam of the same load same span load situated at same distance so that's why i uh, I, I used to say the the arches are really advantageous here you can see uh, it is clear that the bending moment below the load is reduced in case of an arch as compared to a simply supported beam. That's why arches are very advantageous in case of long structures. Now, arches can be used to reduce the bending moments in long span structures. That's what we have seen in the previous slide. Essentially, an arch acts as an inverted cable. So, it receives its load mainly in compression. Okay, Because of its rigidity, it must also resist some bending and shear depending on how it is loaded and shaped. We'll see all those things. Now, uh, uh, if I want to uh, find what are the different types of arches, what are the different elements of an arches, we'll see these things in these sliders. In particular, if an arch has a parabolic shape, okay, uh, it could be a circular also. Now, here I am specifically telling about parabolic shape and it is subject to the uniformly horizontal, uh, uniform horizontally distributed vertical load. Okay. Uh, then, okay, it means that the loading should be something like this. Okay. If this is an arch, if this is a parabolic arch, okay, so what in a whatever kind bit of support it could be. So, it should be having a horizontal uniformly distributed load. Okay, so this load should be uniformly distributed and horizontally, not inclined. Then only compressive forces will be uh, resisted by the arch. Under these conditions, arch shape is called funicular arch because no bending or shear force occurs in this arch. The condition is it should be parabolic and uh, it should be subjected to uniform horizontally distributed vertical load. So this is the component of an arch. We'll see that this diagram later also. This is a central rise we call that is distance from here up to here we call this distance as a central rise now these are called abutments here so the center portion is called the crown so we have this as extra dose or back and this we call intradose or soffit or okay anything and this is a spring line okay so next one so what are the types of arches we have? We have a fixed arch. You can see here in the first diagram where two ends are fixed. We have a tied arch where the supports are tied by a rod uh, and these are the pin supports. We have two hinged arch because these hinges are uh, 
sorry, sorry these supports are pinned or hinged and here we have a three hinged arch where the supports are actually pinned and we have a hinge at the crown of the arch because of this hinge this arch actually becomes a determinate arch so uh, our topic on study of arches in this subject will be strictly uh, it will be for three hinged arches only next now fixed arch a fixed arch is often made of a reinforced concrete although it may require less material to construct than other types of arches it must have a solid foundation abutments right abutments i mean to say these things it should have a solid foundation abutments uh, since it is indeterminate because uh, we have three reactions here and we have three reactions here but we have only uh, three equilibrium equations which are available so six minus three that is this is total number of unknown reactions and these are available equilibrium equations so it is an indeterminate to third degree and consequently additional stresses can be introduced into the arch due to the relative settlement of the supports okay if the supports get settled so there will be some additional uh, stresses which will be developed in the arch now we have a two hinged arch a two hinged arch is a commonly made of uh, from metal or timber it is indeterminate to first degree how so two unknown reactions here two unknown reactions here so we have totally four unknown reactions we have three equilibrium equations so it is indeterminate to the first degree it is somewhat insensitive to settlements so it cannot handle settlements properly we could make this structure statically determinate by replacing one of the hinges with a roller that is one of these supports with a roller doing so however would remove the capacity of the structure means we, we are act you are actually reducing the uh, capacity of this structure to resist bending along its span and as a result it would serve as a curved beam and it will not become a arch now we have a three hinged arch so which will be learning in detail in this course a three hinged arch which is also made up of from metal or timber is actually statically determinate now how i can say it is a determinate so we have two reactions here we have two reactions here we have totally four number of unknown reactions but we have three equilibrium equations but because of introducing a hinge at the crown i have one more equilibrium equation one more additional equilibrium equations so this comes out to be zero so it is a determinate now what additional equilibrium equation i have so i can say that the moment at this hinge is zero this is the additional equilibrium equation what i can have uh, i can say moment at the hinge is zero so that's why this uh, arch becomes a determinate arch now we have also have a tied arch uh, if two and three hinged arches are to be constructed without the need of for a larger foundation abutments and if clearance is uh, not a problem then supports can be connected with the tie rod like what you can see here so these are the different components of the arch which i have already explained to you so main things are this is the crown right these are the abutments okay sorry these are the abutments so these are the extra doors this is the intra doors right so many other things are there and this is actually the rise that is from distance from here up to here this is an rise now we have some couple of interesting videos to understand the arches so these videos i'll put it in a description you can just watch through them okay so uh, i will stop here now uh, next videos will uh, study in detail about the arches and we'll solve some of the numerical examples so till then thank you bye